It happened last summer on a warm Saturday afternoon. My name is Eve and I live in the city of St. Petersburg in an ordinary five-story building called the Khrushchev Building. On the very top floor, I live alone in a one-bedroom apartment. So it was an ordinary day. I decided, as I always do on Saturdays, to exercise during the lunch hour, do push-ups, dumbbells, etc. After I finished working out, I heard the doorbell ring. Someone had pressed the bell and was holding it without letting go. You could tell by the changing music of the bell, which didn't quite reach the middle. The first thought that came to my mind was that it was probably the downstairs neighbors who had come to pick on me for being too loud while I was exercising. I went to the apartment door, opened it quietly, went to the front door and looked through the peephole. As I leaned against the peephole, I clearly heard footsteps, and when I saw an empty landing, I heard breathing as if someone was exhaling after taking a deep breath. This sound was coming from the right, where the door to the neighbor's apartment was. I immediately thought it was a salesman or something like that, as if he had rung a doorbell. No one answered, and he went to the other door. But I stayed to watch. For five minutes there was no sign of anyone outside. I thought it was just me, so I went about my business in the evening at 19 Neal. I headed to the Vasilyevsky Island Promenade for the Salsa Open Air event. The festivities lasted from 20 Ciro to 23 Near Ciro. As I reached the third floor, I heard a sigh behind me, reminiscent of the one I had heard earlier by the peephole. Upon turning around I found no one in sight, yet a chill ran down my spine. Feeling unsettled, I quickened my pace. Upon reaching my apartment, I swiftly opened and closed the front door behind me. Just as I turned the latch to secure the door, the doorbell rang. An uneasy feeling washed over me. However, no one appeared to be following. Peering through the peephole, I heard footsteps again, as if someone was lurking just out of sight, accompanied by another sigh. I stood there for about five minutes, but as in the afternoon, there was no visible presence on the landing. The time was already zero ten minutes after I had showered and changed. I went to watch Smallville Mysteries, which I decided to finish after all these years. I watched two episodes, finished about one-thirty. It was time to go to bed. Before going to bed, I decided to go to the bathroom. When I left and went to my room, the doorbell rang. I was scared to death. The first thing I did was to go to the kitchen and get a knife. I went to the door of the apartment, opened it quietly and took a step to the front door, leaning against the peephole. Once again the story repeated itself, the same noises and no one on the landing. I stood there for about fifteen minutes looking through the peephole. No one was there. I turned around and started to leave when suddenly the doorbell rang. I ran up to look through the peephole. Again, no one was there. I was scared. I had these thoughts in my head. Suddenly some creature would sneak into my apartment and kill me. I stood there stupidly looking through the peephole with a knife in my hand. When the fear began to fade, I decided to go to bed. What happened then shocked me. Then, about five minutes later, I heard the click of the front door lock. My neighbor on the landing had decided to go out for a smoke. There was giggling and clapping outside. The creature cheered as the neighbor stepped onto the landing. A shadow flashed across the floor toward him. There was a scream. The neighbor rolled to the side as if he had been hit in the head. Then he rose into the air and began to put his hands to his throat, as if someone were choking him and he was trying to free himself, grunting for lack of air. Then he collapsed flat on the floor and began to twitch, as if someone were forcibly holding him down. The door to his apartment swung open and a woman's scream rang out. His wife was standing in the doorway, and what happened next is hard to describe at all. It all happened very quickly. The wife was folded in half, as if she had been hit in the stomach and at the same time she literally flew into the apartment, out of sight, as if she had been hit by a flying cannonball taking her with her. Then there was a violent thud against my door, and immediately the lifeless body of my neighbor literally slid, as if tied to a car with a rope and pushed hard on the accelerator, into the doorway of the slamming front door of his apartment, which made a violent thud. Then there was a click then a second, and there was silence on the landing. I woke up sitting on the mat with my back to the front door. I jumped up, looked through the peephole, nothing. I looked at the clock hanging in the hall. It was ten in zero in the morning. I had errands to run. I was afraid to go out on the landing, but I made up my mind. In fact, my neighbor saved me by his death, because my lock was on two bolts and the door was scratched. 
The creature would have gotten into my apartment sooner or later. Good thing I had insurance. I had to call the police. After paying a little extra money, I got a new strong door with a big latch. Now I always lock the door at night. The police were surprised that I didn't drink alcohol. According to them, you have to be drunk to not notice the burglars breaking into my apartment. Of course, I didn't say anything about the neighbors and the whole story. No one would have believed it anyway. I said I was just sleeping, and in the morning I found a broken lock and a scratched door. A month later, the neighbors went missing. No bodies were found. Their apartment was turned upside down, and the floor was stained with blood. What happened to me that night? What was that creature that was invisible but cast a shadow in the light? Remains a mystery to me. When I walked by my neighbor's apartment, I often heard giggling and a kind of shuffling coming from there. Today, a new laid couple moved into the apartment. They came to visit me to get acquainted. I'm scared. I don't know how to save them.